right now on KSL Plus. Today I'm doing a house tour because we all know none of you losers will ever be invited here. Let's go. Tens of millions in the U.S. have this social media app on their phone. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Nowadays, you know, everyone is on their phones. They're always on social media. So we need to answer the question of how do we communicate with this targeted audience? And TikTok has been one of those ways. But in recent weeks, Utah has joined a growing list of states banning the software from state-owned devices. We did. We had a lot of fun. But it's one, one of uh, many ways that we communicate. And social media is always evolving. And so we have our team in place, and, and we're going to be you know, looking at, uh, at those, uh, those platforms that we still have. And uh, we'll be looking at uh, new ways that we can communicate as well. I'm Matt Rascone, and this week we dive into the debate playing out over TikTok, one of the most popular social media apps in the world. Does it really pose a threat to government data? And what about your data? I think there's growing concern, um, you know, really across the, uh, the country. And, and so it's, it's something that, uh, that, we were, that we were planning for. Um, and then, uh, you know, when, when the governor uh, mentioned his concerns and, and uh, the issued the executive order, uh, we, we took it down immediately. I talked to city and state agencies about using it. Before we even launched this, this was something that we looked into. Cybersecurity is very important for us. Our overall security is important. So we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to protect our infrastructure here at the Salt Lake City Police Department. And so when it comes to TikTok and some of the security concerns, we're absolutely following the latest uh, intelligence that's coming in um, from the uh, federal government, but also working working closely with our city um, uh, organization, our city I IMS teams as well. My colleague, digital journalist Eliza Pace, talked to law professor Matthew Toxin at the University of Utah. He's an expert in criminal and cyber law and data privacy. So to the average citizen that doesn't know what that means, what does it mean when people say they're taking your data? <laughs> I, um, I guess it means that they will collect the data for, typically for use you know, in the app, like if you use Google Maps and uh, they'll not only take or collect uh, the data that you type into the app, but also just your location while you're using it. Um, in some cases, your location, even when you're not using it. Uh, and then they'll store that data, um, you know, for for as long as they care to store it. And then they will either use it for their own business purposes, eventually discard it, you know, unused or sell it uh, for marketing purposes. And, you know, that last part is very common. And so that kind of leads nicely into my next question, which is um, there are multiple apps that do use data for algorithms, or like you were saying with Google Maps. So why is it such a big deal for TikTok? What's different about TikTok taking data than other applications we're using? I think the concern with TikTok is just its country of origin and what we don't know about uh, how its data is processed there, right? So uh, TikTok is a Chinese company um, that's it, it, uh, evolved from a company called ByteDance that was, you know, developed in China. And now TikTok has become sort of an international company, but it's it's based in China. And, you know, the U.S.-China relations are somewhat tense. They're something of a global rival. Um, and I think there's concerns about, uh, you know, potential intelligence gathering by the Chinese government via uh, a, a Chinese firm, uh, including TikTok. And sometimes they call that data harvesting when they, when they take your data and they use it for things. Um, so would you consider, since you teach, you know, privacy and cyber law, would you consider that ethical if they're taking, you know, the data and the information that you use on the app and they're using it or selling it as a professor? It's an interesting question. It's I don't know that it's unethical in the sense of extremely harmful to to customers. It might be unethical in the sense that they do it without the knowledge of the vast majority of customers. I don't think that there's much disclosure to customers or you know awareness on, um, for customers in terms of exactly what's done with this data, how much it's sold, uh, that type of stuff. You know, there's it, unless you're reading the privacy policy of TikTok or you know every app you download, which would be 
you know, a part-time job in and of itself, you're probably not aware of exactly what's going on with with all the data, all the data that uh, these apps are collecting. And so there might be an, an ethical issue there. I mean, even beyond ethics, we might just want to restrict the uses and collection of private data for a variety of reasons, because, you know, e even if the harms aren't massive, I mean, every company is doing it and they amass a big a sort of dossier about your activities, your location, uh, all the things that you're doing with your cell phone and with your computer. You know, that over time, and once you build up enough of that stuff, it becomes very sensitive. You can. Uh, learn a lot about a person, sort of all of their activities, their politics, their religion, etc. Um, so we might want to, you know, regulate it even if it doesn't quite get to the line of clearly unethical. But it, you could argue that it's unethical as well. And you kind of touched on this already, but, um, you know, would you consider that harmful? Is it harmful for a company to be using our data? I think it can be harmful. There are certainly risks to it. Um, you know, the, there are the risks of a government might get their hands on it, either a foreign government in this case, or our own government for criminal investigation purposes in ways that might be harmful to you. Um, and short of that, it may be, it, um, you know, you can be denied, maybe like a credit rating agency gets their hands on it or a bank or a potential future employer. They see something they don't like, you you know don't get a job or you don't get a loan. Um, so there can be downstream harms like that. You know, there's there's the um, again, these are all low probability things, but they do happen. You know, a there are employees at companies that have abused this data for stocking purposes uh, or other sort of you know improper purposes. Again, it's it's rare, but it does happen. Um, and you know, in theory, this stuff could be disclosed and that might be embarrassing or, you know, just a, a privacy violation. So the harms are mostly low probability, mostly risk based, but there are real harms to this stuff. It's really interesting. Some people, um, I mean, even I remember in my degree at the U, they were talking about data was, it was kind of early in the days of social media and finding out that they were using data collection and and they asked if that bothered us. And some people were like, I like that my ads are targeted. Like, I like that it's it's always things that I like and they know what type of a consumer I am. And I enjoy that. Like, I, I like that they know who I am and where I live. And, and other people were like, I don't like that. That makes me uncomfortable. You know, I don't like that I'm talking about something and then I see it on Instagram or on TikTok. Yeah, they, I, I mean, there's, I, I think people in the sort of privacy community, you know, the, the law and privacy community, um, have different views on it. Uh, targeted advertising itself, it, yeah, some people consider it harmful. Um, you know, I, I don't think that's one of the main problems with this. You know, it, it's targeted advertising is largely automated. There's not a lot of human involvement in it necessarily. And so that might give us a little bit of comfort. Um, you know, it, that said, for those people who find it creepy, I mean, that's, that's sort of a harm in itself when you're uh, a lot of people have had the experience of like you're talking about something, maybe you Google something, and then you get an unrelated sort of ad or marketing email, and it's it, it can be creepy. You know, it can it can uh, upset people. You know, again, that's that's going to be the mildest of the of the harms that you might experience from data collection, but it could still be a harm for some people. And then there are worse versions of that, like um, you know, you uh, uh, someone gets pregnant and they and they don't want to tell people or someone. Um, you know, is, is living a lifestyle that they don't want to disclose to their parents or something like that. And then they start to get marketing related to that lifestyle or that pregnancy uh, that can be a targeted advertising harm that is very substantial. Uh, again, rarer, but but more substantial. Governor Spencer Cox's December 12th executive order applies to all state executive branch agencies. Utah joined a growing number of states banning its agencies from using TikTok. But local police departments continue to use the platform and say they're seeing the benefits. This special Matt Rascone spoke to two agencies. One UDOT, that for example, has Apple's had a popular week, account since the beginning of 2022. But they immediately deleted the account, they said, when the order came down. Yeah, I mean, we're, uh, we're, we're really interested in, in reaching younger audiences, older audiences, everyone in between, because, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is Utah and, and uh, we're, we're the transportation department for, for uh, the state. And so we really want people to, to have the information that they need so that they can make plans before hitting the road. Um, and just, just really uh, reaching out to people 
in, uh, in ways that, uh, that resonate with them. And, and so I think looking at all of our social media platforms, we, we kind of tailor our, our approach and, and uh, look, at, um, look at the ways that are, that are most effective to communicate. TikTok was just one of the many ways that we communicate. We have, uh, we have Twitter accounts, Facebook, Instagram, and, and we're going to put all of our efforts into continuing those platforms and, and also looking at, at new ways to communicate. Asking someone that you know doesn't work for the government, that, but that is an expert in privacy, do you think the governor's ban is effective um, in what they're trying to do? If they're citing a security concern, do you think that's an effective way to deal with it? I think it will be effective as long as it's sort of enforced. If they if they're truly keeping TikTok off of these devices, I mean, it's a it'll be effective that way. Um, you know, TikTok's a very popular app. Uh, the ban encompasses all state-owned devices, which is a little bit of an ambiguous term. In the governor's order, he cites national security concerns and warnings from the FBI. FBI Director Chris Ray has warned of the potential dangers of using the app in recent months. National security concerns, uh, at least from the FBI's end, uh, about TikTok. They uh, include the possibility that the Chinese government could use it to control data collection on millions of users or control the recommendation algorithm, uh, which could be used for influence operations. So I, I think though it'll be effective to the extent that, that they can keep TikTok off people's phones. Um, you know, if it's not on the phone, then it, then it can't collect. Um, but it, you know, to be determined if you can keep all your employees, uh, including, you know, those of a, of a younger demographic who I think last year there were something like 90 million new downloads of TikTok in America, which is practically a third of, of all Americans. Um, it, you know, it's, a, it's an extremely popular app. So, well, I guess it remains to be seen whether, whether they'll effectively keep it off. But I, I think it will be effective if they, uh, with, with that small caveat. And I guess I would ask as a follow up to that. Um, like, what's the harm of not having it? So they've decided that it's so harmful, they'd rather lose that communication with, you know, 90 million new people on there. Are there harms in not using TikTok? Are there repercussions for that? I mean, it, it might be an inconvenience for the for the employees. Um, I think the worst that that um, you could say about the ban is that it might just be unnecessary. I don't think we know. I don't think we have any evidence that TikTok is being used for foreign intelligence um, operations. It's more of a potential thing. And, and, you know, I think it makes sense to be concerned about that potential. But um, we don't have any you know, hard evidence of that happening. Uh, TikTok itself um, has tried to assure people that the data is largely stored in the United States um, and not processed uh, in China or shared with the government. We are a company that is incorporated in the United States. We're required to comply with U.S. law, which we do. Um, U.S. user data is stored here in the United States, and we're adding additional controls by moving data into Oracle's cloud and having additional checks and balances on um, what we're collecting, where it goes, to make sure that there's no doubt that U.S. user data is secure. It's not clear that we can take that at face value, but it, you know, it's it's an ambiguity. So I think the worst that, that could happen is um, you know unnecessarily banning a very popular app. Uh, again, um, it, it'll depend on how much you think um, TikTok, it, I think for some people, TikTok might be socially valuable if yeah. they use it as a so, social network and things like that. Um, you know, for, I don't know, it's, it's, it, it, beauty is in the eye of, beho of the beholder uh, with, with these apps. But so I, I think that's the downside. Oh, Mr. Poe, that's my name, that name again is Mr. Poe. You know, the number one priority for our police department is to continue to build and strengthen the relationship with our community members. The order does not include colleges, the attorney general's office, and the legislative and judicial branches. And when it comes to TikTok, you know, I think as you continue to see out in the public setting, TikTok is really that behind the scenes, you know, that kind of what is life like? What is the culture like within a police department? And that's what we've been using our TikTok platform for. And of course, it does not include city and county government agencies, like the Salt Lake Police Department, which just launched its own TikTok account last month. That shows that there is interest in seeing what life is like behind the doors here at the Salt Lake City Police Department. And we're encour that's encouraging for us to see that people want to engage with our police department on social media. The app has become a popular way for police departments across the state and country 
to reach younger audiences in their communities. So we're continuing to, to monitor everything. You know, our TikTok platform is still out there. We're continuing to adapt and we're monitoring the situation when it comes to security threats. You know, we are a police department, so that is one of the things that we do um, every single day. We are doing threat analysis to make sure that, you know, everything that we are doing is done in the safest way possible. So what would you suggest as a solution if people are concerned, um, like let's say for the government as, as an example, what would you suggest as someone that's an expert in the field of privacy and cyber crimes, um, what would you advise? We'll say, I think we'll say for governments first and then for like the common person. Sure. Um, for governments, um, I would follow the sort of guidance of the federal government or any intelligence reports that you might get. Um, if you consider this to be a, a substantial concern, then I, I think a, a ban um, is fine, you know, it is, is appropriate if there's, if we think there's a real concern um, for apps, you know, owned by potentially hostile um, foreign powers. For, um, you know, again, if, if they don't have any indication of that, I don't think there's any necessary urgency for states for other states to ban TikTok. Um, but I, I don't find it an unreasonable response to the potential threats uh, from from a um, state owned from a um, Chinese company. The um, for individuals, I think the calculus is a little different, just because there's less intelligence value for the average citizen. Um, in terms of their movements or the things going on with their phone. You know, they're not in a sensitive government meeting or, or something like that. So there are a few alternatives. I mean, one is you can not have TikTok on your phone. Maybe you'll be more productive um, uh, without it. But also you could um, curtail the permissions that you give to the app. Um, my understanding is that it asks, for instance, for location data and collects location data, you know, fairly aggressively, you could turn that off. I mean, many, many apps do, but um, so you could, you could deny permission um, for that, uh, for, for other things as well, and sort of um, limit your exposure that way. But I, again, I think the, I think the real downsides and potential downsides to TikTok um, really are more directed towards state uh, and federal government and you know, government-associated, military-associated uh, things, less so sort of daily American life uh, for the average user. You're saying they care less about what we do every day? <laughs> right. <laughs> the the intelligence life. value of, say, my uh, movements or even the, um, you know, it, so TikTok has access to location data um, for most people. TikTok has access to um, camera and uh and recorder because you're recording things onto the app and then transmitting it. So you give it permission to access these things. In the worst case scenario, you know, a, a foreign intelligence um, agency could could access these and use it as almost a bug or could track someone's location. And if they did that for my phone, I don't think they'd find anything of of use uh, to to their intelligence agency. They would they would find out very personal information about myself. But, you know, I don't I don't work in state government. I'm not I don't have access to anything uh, of interest in terms of foreign policy. Um, so the, there is a, a bit of a limit to the usefulness of it for a foreign power. And people have said the same thing about um, the use of like Amazon Alexas or like Google Hubs, where because some people have said it, it alarms them that it records a lot of what you say. And other people are like, doesn't bother me at all. So, I mean, similarly, it would maybe bother you more if you were in the military or if you were a governor. But to the average person, probably doesn't matter too much. Well, again, I, I think there once you get into um, Amazon Alexa and recording and things like that, I think you know there's a real big privacy issue there where we really want to protect the you know the privacy of people's homes, um, the things they say to each other in, in you know inside their homes, uh, activity, you know, the electricity they use, all the stuff can be can be captured by smart home devices. Um, the Chinese government probably doesn't care what what you or I are saying in our homes, but uh, marketers might, our own government might. Um, so, you know, that there are different concerns, but but serious concerns with uh, those types of devices as well. What what do you think we will see 
I mean, we're the sixth state to ban TikTok, um, and there are other states talking about it. So what do you think we'll see as this continues to progress? Do you think more people will be getting rid of TikTok, but at the same time, it's a growing app? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I think we'll see more states uh, banning TikTok and perhaps more widespread TikTok bans in general. Um, for, you know, again, for sensitive uh, areas. At this point, it's really just out of an abundance of caution. I, again, I'm not aware of any, um, you know, intelligence uh, uh, on our, in terms of United States intelligence that would indicate that there's any foreign uh, government involvement in TikTok uh, data collection. Again, apps in general tend to be pretty aggressive about data collection because you can make money from this information. So there's nothing inherently uh, dangerous about an app collecting data in terms of intelligence. But I, I think out of an abundance of caution, uh, I wouldn't be at all surprised if we see more states uh, moving in this direction, just, just to be safe. Now, TikTok is pushing back against any claim that it's giving any control or access to the Chinese government. Still, the U.S. federal government is also moving in that direction of banning TikTok at a federal level. In a spending bill that Congress unveiled just this week, TikTok would be banned from most U.S. government devices. In fact, um, there's probably a much more compelling argument for the federal government to ban these devices just because there's greater you know, intelligence value um, when we're talking about federal or military things than, than any state government. That does it for us this week on KSL Plus. I'm Matt Rascone. Have a great holiday, and we'll see you again next week.